My memories of the mill go back uh, more than 50 years ago when I was just a student in the elementary school system. And I recall coming here on bus trips and uh, going to the mill with all the, my other uh, fellow students and listening to the, the wheels grinding and the belts turning. Very, very interesting. At the end of the day, we each took a little bag of wheat flour home. So that building in itself is a unique structure. First of all, it's built in the wetlands, right? So there's water running through it. It's all stone, masonry, foundations, old timber. I mean, you, you don't see that style of building in today's, in today's world. It's not just the history of one family or the history of one building. It is the history of the Long Point Settlement. It is the history of every family that ever interacted with the building. It is the history of our nation. It is the quintessential immigrant story. And there isn't any visitor to the mill that cannot relate to the story. This mill is unique in that it is one of the oldest operating mills in the province of Ontario. It has the natural historic uh, site designation. The mill was built in 1798 in response to John's receiving a grant of 600 acres with the provision that he would build a grist mill and further develop the land. He also built a sawmill, having need of the lumber first to build the grist mill. He went on further after that to pass the mill down to his sons, who have continuously passed it down to my grandfather, John C., who in 1956 sold it to then Big Creek Region Conservation Authority. The Long Point Region Conservation Authority uh, expanded to include the Big Creek Region Conservation Authority and five other watersheds and hence the Long Point Region Conservation Authority has been responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of this uh, grist mill. Since 1956, there have been uh, improvements made to the mill. For example, the uh, beams have been replaced, the foundation was upgraded just after the purchase. And now today we are seeing the need again for further work inside the mill, this time the foundation being the problem. The challenges of such an old building are uh, basically the, the building was built in a floodplain like all, all grist mills were and the, the fact that the cold winters and frost and floods heave some of the structure from time to time and uh, it regularly needs maintenance. Recently the, the mill had uh, shifted, the, the beams became deteriorated to the point where they needed replacement and uh, a contractor was hired and uh, several major improvements were made to this unique building. So in our, in our process of, of dewatering, yeah. where it kept coming up, that we found a large crack in the actual foundation. So that's where the water was actually coming in. So as we were pumping it out, it was flowing in just yeah. as fast. Yeah. So the solution, obviously I don't know if you know this or not, but you can talk about the solution. Grassmere's been in business for 26 years. We're a design build contractor. We're a unique firm because we don't get to build the normal building. Anything that's got any um, irregularity, it's unique, it's hard work, Grasmer seems to get the job. The biggest challenges facing this restoration and any future restorations are maintaining historical integrity. What would be appropriate, what's period, what's correct, to the greatest degree possible. Uh, th those things must be considered if we are to not just preserve the building but to preserve the feeling that when you walk into a building like this you have stepped back in time. Um, our, our number one phase is the basement which is getting rid of the water, pouring a foundation base in and pouring two concrete piers in order to put the timbers back in to shore the basement floor because there's three levels. One of the big obstacles that we came across already right now is we went to go start the, 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 the structuring of the foundations, so we had to remove all the water. So we've been pumping water for like four days and we couldn't figure out why the water. So once we got it down to a certain level and we dammed off actually the mill in itself to stop the water, we detected a huge crack in the foundation. So with the consultants and our, and our experience, we've came across a solution in order to repair that 
with the same guidelines of, of what you know the drawings were, but just using different construction methods. The challenge of trying to get that water out of there and then to excavate and put the geotechnical and the stone, that's how we thought we were gonna do it, was a challenge in itself because I'd have five guys with wheelbarrows taking like 10 dump truck loads of stone in through, those, through a mandor. Like I me, mean, just so labor intensive in order to make that happen. But once we started pumping it and the water just kept coming in and in, we had to find another solution. So we had a meeting down on site, my project manager, Chris, with the engineers, and they came up with a different solution in order to pump concrete in. Much like how, you know, when there's uh, large bridges and there's piers in the water, and they drive these big caissons on, and as they're pumping the concrete in, the concrete's curing because it's a different admix. We're going to the same type of thing here because we're never gonna get rid of all the water down there. But as we fill it up and make it structurally sound, we've found the proper admixture of today's technologies in order to make that happen. Once we get the basement poured back in place, and we get it secured and tight and put some shores in, then we move up to the next floor to put in our pillars which is our old rough timbers, like eight by eights and 10 by 10s, which you'll see when you get there that supports the floor systems. Some of them are missing. Some of them you can actually see when you walk there that there's a notch in a beam that that post just isn't there anymore. Maybe it fell apart, maybe it disintegrated. But I mean, to give it back its structural sound, what it's required, like for that building to be sound and safe, that's what needs to happen. And then the third phase is, is, is the windows. So here's one of the existing windows that are in here with some damages that are done to it. So what we're doing, we're pulling these windows out, taking them back to the shop and refinishing them there, which is where we are replacing and basically refurbishing any existing wood that needs to be fixed along with the single plane glass where we'll reglaze it all in and make them kind of look like they were back then. As far as the grindstones, I think they have been operational. I think that there will be a lot more confidence in the person that's gonna run them, that they should be able to run with a little bit more ease in their mind that we do have a foundation, a structural building. So nothing's gonna fall down because you know how old it is. But I mean, I think that's something that everybody loves to see when they are on. The restoration of the uh, Bacchus Grist Mill was an ambitious project. And uh, on behalf of the Long Point Region Conservation Authority and its chair, I want to thank the fundraising committee and most of all the uh, Garfield Weston Foundation for their generous contribution of dollars to upgrade this facility and make sure it's available for future generations to enjoy. It's ironic that um, money from the Weston Foundation is going towards today's restoration efforts at the mill. In the 1950s, uh, we actually sold flour to the George Weston Company. This is one of the uh, George Weston Limited um, receipts and uh, invoices that we have that establishes that early connection to the Westons. It's for 140 bags of soft flour, and we have two more here that also establish further correspondence and further business between um, Bacchus and Weston. I love it when I can connect something in the past to something going on uh, at this time period. This brings everything full circle and uh, it shows the continuity. Um, it's great as well to have uh, a foundation like the, the Westons uh, involved with the mill, um, where at one time the relationship were business partners now brings them into the circle as well to be cultural stewards. Yep. Jalen, isn't yep. it exciting? Uh, we have discovered this old receipt that showed that the Bacchus Mill sold their flour to the Western Biscuit Companies in the 1950s. And it's just so wonderful because our heritage goes back so far of the Western Companies itself. And um, you must be very thrilled to think of your connection to this mill. Very much so, because uh, a father, I guess, who was sort of, uh, before he died, he was still looking at a place like this and taking it up to show it to me as well as the rest of my family. And um, uh, and now we're we're back and active and, and uh, we've got children coming to see the place and, and we're going to be there hopefully to the end of our days. Mm -hmm. 
number of the posts have been either cut off and moored up or bigger moorings there, especially here. You can see that's a brand new yeah. post there. And then it's back right. they've got a new, yeah, new cross brace, cross up, brace there. up there. I'd say it's a professional job of restoration. Yeah. More than 50 years later, I, I'm just delighted that we can preserve this mill so that future generations can enjoy it just exactly what I did when I was a kid. Well, I hope to see that when we're done, you can't tell that somebody just finished that. I, I, I hope that when I take my kids in there in the summertime and we're going through a tour, and other than the concrete, which you will probably notice, but it'll match the other concrete in the floor, I'm gonna ask them, where's the timbers that I replace? Can you tell which windows I did, which, ones, which windows I didn't? And if they can't, then I think I've, I've succeeded and done our job. I hope to see the mill continue for another 200 years. I hope to see the education programs continue as part of the curriculum here in Norfolk County. I hope that more than just as a pastoral setting for weddings, that the mill can be the focal point for an understanding of our history here in Long Point Settlement and that we can use it as a way to, to teach about the past. I firmly believe that you have to know who you are, where you came from, before you can really know where you're going and how you're going to get there. And I, I'd like to see that this building continues playing that role for future generations. Mm -hmm.